Hi, everybody. Welcome to this edition of the MCHD Paramedic Podcast 360. I'm Dr. Rob Dixon. Today I have our Associate Medical Director and the uh, founder of the MCHD Paramedic Podcast, Dr. Casey Patrick, with us. Wow, hey, wow. Casey. A lot to live up to there. A lot to live Thanks. up to, man. All right, so Casey, let's go back a little bit and tell us why we even got into this getting getting a hyperkalemia protocol written. Yeah, so I mean, we, we did a hyperkalemia podcast way back and the real genesis of the entire issue was that we had protocols written for thinking about hyperkalemia in the H's and the T's in cardiac arrest, but we had four or five charts over the span of about six months yeah. come to our desks with paramedics coming to us saying, hey, we picked up this patient at dialysis, or we picked up this DKA patient and QRS was wide, or the T waves were peaked, or both. and what are we to do when they're peri-arrest? We don't really have a protocol right. to address those patients. You know, what do we do when we think it's hyperkalemia? They're not in arrest. Can we treat them? Right, so this is a classic, I think one of the best examples here at MCHD of the, the crews kind of driving the protocols to the medical directors. And we said, yep, you're right. You shouldn't have to wait till they're in arrest. We developed a, a protocol and this is kind of some of the teaching around it. So yeah, after, after the first one, we said, consult after the second one we said consult after the sixth <laughs> one we said maybe we should change the protocol. Maybe we need to change the protocol uh, so you've already answered the first question dr. Patrick who gets hyperkalemia so number one two and three is missed dialysis. Miss dialysis next DKA and then occasionally an excited delirium a medical or excited delirium um, as well we'll throw those in there so tell us a little bit Casey about the EKG changes you see and, and understanding that these changes can be at any level of, they're not necessarily correlated with the elevation, the level of potassium. Actually, in this slide, I actually cropped off the uh, potassium levels because as we know, while there's thought to be a progression from mild hyperkalemia, moderate, severe, peak T's, widened QRS, sine wave, we know that that doesn't necessarily have to happen in a uh, organized fashion. Right. In you other mean, words, patients and EKGs don't follow the rule book. They don't follow the rule book. So, right. you know, we don't want to diagnose or we're not expecting our paramedics to diagnose new hyperkalemia in the field. That's a bit much without iStats and metabolic panels. But there are a certain subgroup of patients that these paramedics brought us that are clearly hyperkalemic based on their history again. History and their EKG findings. Yep. So, this is one of Dr. Patrick's favorite slides. I think it really does hold true that. When you think about the changes that he just went over, so peak T's, a loss of the P, a widening of the QRS, and then ultimately sine wave and asystole. You can see the uh, fisherman there uh, hooking the T wave, and you can imagine in your in your eyes mind as you're pulling up, you get a peak T, and as you pull out, you have a, a widening of the QRS, and then ultimately a sine wave and asystole. So that's just one of the ways that we try to remember what types of changes we're going to see. So this would be an EKG. We're taking a look. We get this for, say, a patient in DKA, looks ill. We're trying to sort out what the inciting problem is with the DKA. We get an EKG. Uh, what do you see on here, doctor? So first you start with, with the T waves, and you see the, the narrow base, the tall T waves there, especially V3 through really V5, V6. Uh, really, in a patient you're suspecting hyperkalemia, fairly concerning. Right, worrisome for hyperkalemia. What about this one? So what would worry you here? You still see, uh, you know, if you look in V5 and V6, those are questionable peak T's, but if you look at the rate. Right, um, it's the rate. Very, right? So it, it doesn't have slow. to be all of them. Remember, everything is a continuum of disease, and depending on where we encounter these patients, we may see one of the classic peak T's that most of us remember, but we may just see a bradycardia, right? So another one, this would be a more classic toxin or hyper K type uh, almost close to sine wave EKG yep. you know where you can you can imagine the widening 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 of the QRS here and so the, the key here is when you look at this your first our medic mind goes to oh my god is this VT but what makes it not VT doctor yeah look at the rate your right, rate your rate's rate. slow your rates you know Anytime you see the slow, wide, bizarre rhythms, less than 120 or so. You should think toxin, 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 hyper K, hyper K, hyper K. Remember the, v, the, the T in VT is tachycardia. So if your rate's 80, think toxins and hyper K. Right. 
When do we treat here? We're gonna treat with high clinical suspicion and EKG changes. So you have to have both. Um, and it's not one, two, or three EKG changes. It's any of the three, peak T's, widen QRS, or, or unstable bradycardias. So one more time, you must have one historical element and an EKG finding. So it has to be in the right historical context, i.e. most common in our service is I missed dialysis. I couldn't get a ride to dialysis. Um, DKA and uh, our excited delirium patients. So think of the EKG changes we looked at. So peak T's, widened QRS, um, something where you look at it and you're thinking, oh my gosh, is this VT, but gosh, it's too slow, right? Think toxins and hyper-K or any unstable bradycardia. And what's our treatment? We're gonna stabilize the myocardium. If you get one, you're gonna give calcium, right? And adding on to that, we're gonna try to drive the potassium intracellularly with both albuterol and sodium bicarb. And if there is sticklers out there, uh, how sodium bicarb uh, helps these patients uh, is too long for the podcast, but again, we have this easily readily available on the cart. Most of these patients are gonna be acidotic, whether it's DKA or missed dialysis. So albuterol continuous to the hospital, calcium chloride, and sodium bicarb. So isn't that VTAC, right? You went over this, I think, really well, Casey. So beware of those wide complex rhythms, especially if they're bizarre and less than 120. It's likely hyper-K and toxin. Remember that, um, channel affecting drugs like amiodarone and lidocaine can be deadly in these patients. So that's the that's the miss we want to avoid here. So this is clearly VT. VT. You're right. right there's, you know, 200. Very yeah, very high. So very much different than this right here, which is l slow, wide and bizarre. So prior EKG, electricity, amiodarone, lidocaine, second EKG, calcium, albuterol, bicarb. All right, that wraps us up. Casey, thanks for joining us today. And as always, if you have questions or comments, leave us a like, share, share the podcast with your friends, listen to the uh, audio podcast, and email us any questions at the podcast email, podcast at mchd-tx.org. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.